Good day to you, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this review. This happens to be my first one, so I may be a little rusty in the review department. Now, when thinking of my favorite animated series of all time, that is a pretty hard one. But when it comes to my top 5, one always comes to mind all the time. And that happens to be the Spider-Man cartoon of 1994, known as Spider-Man the Animated Series. Now, when thinking about Spider-Man in cartoon form, there's only a few cartoons that come to mind. The 1969, no, 1967 version, you have the 1980s version, and then you happen to have the Unlimited series, and unfortunately you happen to have that cruddy new animated series that came out straight after the movies, which I think is a ball of crap. And then you happen to have the Spectacular Spider-Man of recent, which was unfortunately cancelled on April 14th to make way for a new animated Spider-Man cartoon based on the Ultimate Comics coming next year. I find that a really bad thing to happen to the Spectacular Spider-Man series because I believe it to be brilliant. But we're not covering that right now. We actually have to cover this series. We're talking about the one right in the middle that happened to mean the most to most of the fans. And this happens to be the one of 1994 that ran from November 19th of that year to the 31st of January of 1998. Now this happens to be one of the classic shows that always happen to stay with you. And it's one of those sort of series you will never be able to forget. It happens to be one of the greatest depictions of Spider-Man on screen for a long time. It did things that the movie couldn't do. And it did things that the spectacular Spider-Man series, which has done very well for itself. There are certain elements of this show that has happened to capture the world of Spider-Man that the spectacular Spider-Man has just missed the mark on. And these are things I'm going to be explaining in this review. This is going to be the review of the first season and I hope that y'all enjoy what you hear. This is obviously going to be an opinion from me, so like, you know, there may be things you disagree with, but you know, that's just the way of life. Now in terms of season 1, you happen to have the first 13 episodes of the series, and it happens to open with a bang, happening to cover some of the most critical Spider-Man villains, storylines, and um, characteristics of um, Peter Parker's life. All straight from the first season. There are so many things that are tackled straight away. They happen to throw all the best, vi uh, some of the best villains all in one spot. Showcase Spider-Man's strength and skill and determination and responsibility. And you can't say that Marvel didn't have their heart in the right place when they created this series. It happens to be, you know, the second longest running Marvel series. Just behind that of the X-Men animated series. And it happens to be like, you know, known as like, you know, one of the greatest superhero series of the 90s. Next to that of Batman the Animated Series and X-Men the Animated Series. This series takes a lot of risk by going about and including so many important elements of the Spider-Man world straight in the first season. Only in 13 episodes do we happen to run into such classic villains as the Scorpion, the Lizard, Hobgoblin, the classic Venom, and the Chameleon, and Dr. Octopus, the Kingpin, and you even get to see the Spider Slayers. This series is not messing around, it gives you what you want straight out of the bat. And even things that you didn't even know about Spider-Man, you would learn straight away. This series doesn't pull any punches when it shows you exactly what it's talking about. Now when it comes to story, there's a lot of things covered in the first six episodes in terms of Kurt Connors turning into the lizard, we happen to see the birth of the scorpion, we also happen to see the wonderful man Kingpin in all its fat, bald glory. And you also happen to see, like, you know, the classic alien costume from episode 7 to episode 9, which happens to be, like, you know, my favorite part of the series, hands down. When it comes to characters, the series holds no punches in bringing out all of the major people that happen to surround Peter Parker's life and the villains that happen to attack Spider Man in due time. Each villain and each um, character in the series happens to be depicted in a way that, you know, you would expect from the comics. When it comes to villains, we happen to have, like, you know, a multitude of people to work with. You happen to see Kraven the Hunter, the Hobgoblin, the Chameleon, the Lizard, Scorpion, Venom. You happen to see the Kingpin. You even happen to see, like, Dr. Octopus. And that's several of the classic villains in the series straight away. When it comes to the animation, everything happens to move in a very smooth and there's always a fluidity level that is always consistent when it's all 2D. The fights between Spider-Man and his villains, which are the main critical aspects of the series in my opinion, all happen to work out pretty damn fine. When seeing Spider-Man go up against the Lizard, very nice. Seeing him go against the Octopus with all the crashing crates and seeing Spider-Man climb up the wall with all the moving tentacles coming after him, very nice. 
Spider-Man's web slinging, very nice also. And the fight between Spider-Man and Venom and seeing Spider-Man move around with all these acrobatic skills in the um, alien costume episodes, all too nice. There's moments where there's 3D backgrounds where Spider-Man happens to move around in 2D through the 3D backgrounds. And there's certain times where it works because like, you know, the fluidity of the 3D happens to be working with the 2D. But there are certain times when the 3D backgrounds happen to move a little slower than the 2D ones. And when Spider-Man happens to try and move around through those 3D backgrounds, they just don't seem to work. But overall, in my opinion, you know, it was 1994. The best CG in the world was going to show up for another year. And when I mean the best CG in the world at the time, I was talking about Toy Story. But again, for the most part, the entire series happens to work on a whole with the great painted backgrounds, a good use of color, and a fluidity in animation not only in the fights, but also outside of the fights. And the soundtrack, very, very nice. Always on the ball, always having to get the emotion in when necessary. There's always like, you know, music for the right occasion. When something's meant to be fast, tension building, or like, you know, getting your adrenaline up. A series happens to have like, you know, a sort of score a sort of classical sound almost to it that happens to be like you know very very well done and there's not many series that can go about and get the right sound along with the right characters and animation and make it all balance out but the sound of this series is very nice and all now when it comes to the enjoyment level of spider-man the animated series is always on a high the series is always giving you what you want in terms of the villains spider-man storyline and just generally giving you like you know the comic book world that spider-man encompasses everything seems to fit into the right spot in a beautiful fashion the fights are good well choreographed and the animation although a little niggly from point a to point b still is tolerable and at times is very nice i mean like you know there's so much going on in the show it's one of those sort of shows that you have to recognize for its brilliant material. I believe it will always have an edge over like, you know, the movies because it always has like, you know, a few things that the movie didn't have and took liberties on to go about and try and introduce new audiences. Overall, Spider-Man the Animated Series of 1994 is a must watch for Marvel fans, Spider-Man fans, and like those who missed out on the great times of the 90s, this is for you as well. It always encompasses what was great about the 90s in terms of its cartoons and the originality of like you know that whole time period the 90s was a good time and this show just shows you why the 90s was such a good time to live in as well you had great cartoons like these to go about and watch overall i give spider-man the animated series of 1999 a 9 out of 10 purely because its originality and its trueness to the comics works in a beautiful way to um please the fans and newcomers to the series so yeah, this is the end of this review. Thanks for listening. I hope that this has been like, you know, an enlightening and um, informative review for you. Obviously, you can comment and rate on the video and possibly subscribe. Who knows? Obviously, in time, I will review the later seasons of Spider-Man the Animated Series. But that's when I do get them on DVD. Until next time, check you later.